First, let me apologize for coming late. And I also apologize on behalf of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, as who uh, are my uh, fellow travelers in coming late. We were at a Security Council meeting, and we also had to attend the sixth anniversary of the Future Assured project established by the First Lady. But I think it's a measure of the respect and admiration we all have for Senator Ken Namani, that we're all here, and that the President had in fact sent a representative in the person of Dr. Bunaya Ono, knowing that he would, on account of these engagements, be unable to make it here in good time. So I'm here to honor an honorable Nigerian, a man who, from everything we've heard and from all that we know, truly loves this nation, and who has made several sacrifices for its good, Senator Ken Namani. The first thing that you notice about him, especially if you observe politics and politicians, is a lack of desperation to occupy political office. It's clear that he wants to serve, but not at all costs. And that lack of desperation, I believe, is what greatly helps him in having the courage of his convictions which is why, even at the risk of losing his Senate presidency at a time when, as you've heard from Senator Wagbar a few moments ago, there were several banana peels, he stood against the notorious third term agenda and he stood strong. The truth is that a nation such as ours must have men and women who are capable of standing strong. This means, as uh, His Excellency Babangide Ali had said, persons able to buck the trend, to work in the interest of the nation in all circumstances. So Senator Namani, we are today faced with challenges that call for the same type of strong leadership that you showed many years ago as President of the Senate especially on the question of national unity and the building of a just, fair, and equitable society. Because we know that we as a nation are better together than apart and that our collective future is worth fighting for. Therefore, this generation of leaders have a historic responsibility to hand over an economically and socially strong and united nation to the coming generations. That is what we received, and that is what we should hand over to the coming generations. And, of course, even with improvements. So your role in national life, sir, has just begun. This book of your exploits in national life and the legislature is merely the beginning of an unfolding epic, a story of national leadership in difficult times, a story of courageous and honest leadership when truth and integrity are so needed. That story will end well for you and for our nation. I must also congratulate you on the launch, of course, of your well-celebrated autobiographical piece and thank you for paying this important civic tax of sharing your story as an accurate account of history, as an encouragement to service with integrity for those who currently hold political office, and an inspiration to the young men and women to whom the torch will be handed. Congratulations on this book. God bless you.